giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, fellow Firsters, and welcome to this week's installment of the one and only Mouth of the South Region Recap Show. Thank you for joining us tonight and spending a piece of your evening with us. This week, we have three events to fill you in on, as well as four others to take a sneak peek at. Sneak peek at. A lot of great action seen across our region, and some teams really rising up to the challenge of infinite recharge. We're excited to talk about uh, more, with this, more with you this evening, and also excited to give out some free stuff to, to your local viewers. Courtesy of the fine folks at Analog Devices, we have one 16470 IMU board up for grabs. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a bit. Uh, if you win this awesome give it, giveaway and you're not sure what it does, trust me, just go and give it to one of your programmers and watch their lives, eyes light up with joy. Uh, that'll be coming up soon, but for now, let's get this underway. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Michael. And I'm Colin. I'm Nick. Uh, so let's start things off with a little bit of a discussion topic. Uh, we have a decent sample size of how this game plays out, what design decisions were accurate and successful, and also some general strategies that perhaps didn't quite pan out. What are some of the, th uh, the things on your minds about this game and what we saw after this week's ac action? Uh, Nick, why don't we start off with you? Uh, so yeah, it seems like uh, climbs were the big thing this week. Um, as long as you're consistently climbing, you're consistently going to win matches and rank. Um, and it was kind of surprising, and, and that was very noticeable in some of our events to where the teams that had climbers were ranking far ahead of the teams that had a really good ball game, um, but they couldn't climb, so they weren't ranking. Yeah, I, t I totally agree. The first sort on uh, most people's scouting list is how reliable is your climber, how good is your climber, and then the second sort is usually balls or auto. So clearly you got to be climbing if you want to do well, uh, especially early in the season and then really focus on the auto. So a couple of things that I've seen regarding like the winning formulas is that they actually quite differ between districts and regionals. Uh, for most of the districts, I've noticed like a winning alliance can take care of two climbs, about five balls in auto, 20 balls in, in teleop, and you pretty much win your district event by doing those things. Uh, there's no need for bullseyes at this stage of the game yet. Really, most teams can get away with just scoring all two pointers and be fine. Uh, for a regional, things are kind of different with more three, like more like three climbers for your win. Uh, a little bit more balls in teleop, maybe five or ten more, two or three more balls in auto, but still the same thing without the need for bullseyes. So I thought that that winning strategy was kind of interesting and a little lower than my expectations originally. Um, but Colin, why don't you tell us about the the low scoring robots at some of these events? Yeah, so I was I I coming into this week, I wasn't sure how low scoring robots would fare. Um, and at Greater Kansas City, we saw a unique uh, implementation of them, where 19, 1982 used their feeder to feed break or to feed neutrino during auto, and that was really effective for them. I haven't seen a whole lot in in district play. What do you guys think about the low scoring robots for districts rather than regionals? Uh, you know, I saw a couple of low-scoring bots uh, this weekend at Greenville uh, that were looking really good. Uh, there was a team that would human load only and then just go dump it in the logo across the field. Um, and then a, a team apprentice, 2687, ranked second, uh, or third, sorry, uh, with the every bot, which can only do low. Um, but it went back to they could always climb, so they were always getting those ranking points. But it seemed like there was a plethora of, a plethora of every bots at Greenville this weekend, and their low scoring was being very effective um, and just winning matches above the team. Because, I mean, if you're putting balls in, in the low goal, then it's going a lot better than, you know, just teams shooting one or two balls in the high of match. Very cool. Um, well, now that it's time to see how teams fared across the region this past weekend as we dive into our weekly recaps, um, go ahead and start us off. 
Yeah, so our featured event this week is the Greenville District event, which allowed us a first glimpse at a lot of Texas teams that we expect to make an impact come state championship time. 30 of Texas's finest took to the field, and many eyes were waiting to see how amazing teams like 2468, 3310, and 2714 tackled this year's game. The gauntlet was thrown down early when team sorry. The gauntlet was thrown down early by Team Appreciate as they opened up quarter or qualification match two with a six power cell autonomous that showed the rest of the field that they came to play. As the matches continued on, there were some teams that began to rise to the top. The baby apprentice team, uh, appreciate team, uh, showed that they were already ready to take the spotlight as team 2687 apprentice stayed near the top of the standings all weekend with their well-practiced and sturdy every bot. Other teams also looked really strong throughout. Howdy bots 6377 showed like they could throw showed they could throw up an impressive amount of shots and do so accurately. Likewise, 2714 Barbecue in their non-trench runner spot was a consistent scoring threat throughout and showcased a consistent level climb all event long. When, when the dust settled, risking it for the brisket turned out to be the right call as Barbecue was the number one seed and were soon joined by Team Appreciate. The elimination round saw some strong performances and occasionally a lot of foul points. And the surprise of the elimination rounds was probably the seventh seed knocking out the number two seed of 3310 Blackhawk Robotics and Team Apprentice 2687, which ended the nine district event slash regional win streaks for 3310. In the end, the combined might of the two best shooters, Auton and Climbers in the field was too much, and the number one seed cruised through the competition to earn their first blue banners of the season. Congratulations to Barbecue, Team Appreciate, and Team 6646 Belton Robotics Space Makers on their well-deserved win. Congratulations are also in order for 5417 Eagle Robotics for their EI award, and to no one's surprise, Team Appreciate came away with the Chairman's Award and the double gold claim win. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now let's head to Dripping Springs and talk about the second district event of the weekend, uh, where 32 teams competed for those valuable district points. Now, before we get started, I want to formally apologize to all our Spectrum fans, as I completely missed 3847 in our preview last week. Uh, as a 2019 Einstein team and a National Woody Flowers Award winning team, they should have been the front runners going into the event, no doubt. And yes, indeed, they were the front runners as 3847 seeded first after 64 matches and picked another Texas powerhouse team, 1477 Texas Torque. Elimination rounds went exactly as expected, with the higher ranked seed beating the lower ranked seed in every matchup except for the 4v5 matchup. The fifth seed, led by 1817 Viano Escatado Robo Raiders, took out the fourth seed in two matches, although their run would end in the semis. Finals featured the first place alliance of 3847, 1477, and 3240 Team Orion up against the second place alliance led by 624 Kryptonite, 4610 Bear Tex, and 6155 Electrobots. The first place alliance won both matches with winning scores of 162 and 151. Their gameplay consisted of two climbers and 25 balls in Teleop to consistently hit that 150 point mark during a elimination rounds. Congratulations. Okay, so what he's going to say is congratulations to 1477 who secured the double gold bling bling. And 8114 for the rookie all-star. Okay. Yeah, so moving on to the Greater Kansas City Regional that was this weekend. Uh, at the end of qualifications, it was pretty unsurprising to see 1986 Team Titanium ranked number one. With their first pick of the draft, they snagged 45-22 Steam Scream, who had a lightning-quick swerve bot and a fantastic intake that allowed them to quickly overwhelm their opponents. 1986 and 45-22 had both demonstrated throughout the weekend that they could dominate, and together they appeared to be an unstoppable force. One slight wrinkle in their plans was a climate situation at Greater Kansas City. By the end of qualifications, only 18 teams had demonstrated the ability to climb, meaning that only a few alliances would have the chance to pull off a triple climb. Rising to the occasion was the third alliance of 3928, 4499, and 1982, who faced the stacked number one alliance of 1986, 4522, and 2357 in the finals. After three finals matches, the triple climb, along with great shooting from Team Neutrino and the Highlanders, and defense from 1982 Cougars, was too much to overcome for the number one alliance. Congratulations to 3928, 4499, and 1982 for pulling off the upset. Shout out to 3928 for their gold, silver, clean bling for also winning the Engineering Inspiration Award. And also congratulations to 3284 Camden 4-H Lasers for winning their Chairman's Award at the really strong regional. 
All right, now before we go to the top 10, as that concluded our recaps, uh, just take a look in chat. We have uh, the what was the a poll for what was the best event in Mouth of the South? And so far, we have a very clear winner uh, for Greenville. So congrats to those Greenville players as yeah. everyone's watching your event. Um, all right, now moving on to top 10. We got your results, uh, and the results are in. We are now seeing... Uh, number one, the slot being taken by 2468 Team Appreciate. Um, closely followed behind them was the number two team of 2714 Barbecue. Number three takes, uh, or is Spectrum, 3847. We go outside of Texas for the number four seed of 1986 Team Titanium. The number five seed goes to 3310 Blackhawk Robotics. Number six, 1477 Texas Torque. Uh, number seven, we have 4522 Team Screen, another non-Texas team. Uh, from in the eighth position, we have Team Apprentice, 2687 Team Appreciates Rookie Team. In the number nine slot, we have 624 Kryptonite. And wrapping up, up the top 10 of week one, we have 5417 Eagle Robotics. Um, make sure that uh, you guys vote for this. Some of the great teams, some very popular teams making this list. Uh, remember, it's up to you who makes it to our Mouth of the South region top 10. So make sure to cast your votes each week and get the teams you love recognized. Uh, thoughts on these rankings? So I find it in, there are a couple teams missing from the top 10 that I kind of expected to be in here. Uh, 6377 Howdy Bots uh, had a really strong performance at Greenville this weekend. Um, and 5892 also had a really strong performance. Um, so I, I was kind of expecting both of those two to pop up on the list, but guess not. Yeah, it seems like uh, teams outside of Texas aren't as popular. I think that's just uh, something I have to live with. Uh, shout out to 5801 and 1987 up at Kansas City. <laughs> All right, well, before we go any further, it's time for that giveaway I mentioned earlier. Tyler, take it away, please. Yep, we're going to be giving away uh, once again uh, from our friends, well, if you're watching earlier, uh, from our friends at Analog Devices, ADIS 16470 IMU. Uh, once again, this is a really cool uh, device and piece that give it to your programmers, as uh, mentioned, and they'll know what to do with it. Uh, but this is uh, designed for demanding high-impact applications like those seen in FRC. Many prevalent teams in the FRC community are using this board as their IMU of choice. Uh, part of the awesome analog devices iSensor product line, known as industry is best in class, uh, when reliability and precisions are critical. So you can check out their GitHub page and uh, more at analog.com forward slash first. Also, they have a wiki.analog.com as well. If you're, interest, if you're interested in winning, the keyword is going to be EveryBot. EveryBot will be the keyword uh, for this. Go ahead and type that in. Don't forget, you do need to be following in order to win. And if you do subscribe, help fund State Loud, Live, and Independent, and join Fun Nation, all the awesome benefits. Uh, you get five times luck to win, and you help support us as well. So EveryBot, and we'll draw in just a few minutes. Thank you very much, Tyler. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the action that we will be seeing this weekend across four events. Yeah, so to start off, uh, down in Little Rock, Arkansas, 59 teams are going to be competing for their chance at gold in the Arkansas region. Now, the obvious locks for this event is Arkansas Powerhouse Team 16 Bomb Squad. They revealed their robot Warthog to the world last week, and everyone was impressed. True to form, they have their signature swerve drive with the utility arm that combines their intake, feeder, climber, and wheel of fortune mechanism all into one. Now looking to team up with them is team 364 Team Fusion. They're coming off a two blue banner year with a rank, division rank one to boot. 364 will look to continue what has been a consistent rise in performance over the last couple of years and pick up their first Arkansas winner's banner. Another perennial Arkansas powerhouse is team 3937 Breakaway. Breakaway is consistently a top performing team at any event they go to. They build good robots, and on top of that, they have a great culture program, winning chairmen at this event last year and EI the year prior. Rounding out the solidified top four for this event is 4265 Secret City Wild Bots. This is a team that normally struggles at their first event, but always comes out strong later in the season. With no bag this year, I'm expecting them to be performing at the top of their, or performing at their later season performance level early on. Some other contenders in this stacked regional are Team 1421 Team Chaos, 2992, the SS Prometheus, 3250, Kennedy Robotics, coming all the way from Northern California, 3959, Mechtech, 4635, Botbusters, and finally, Team 5006, Apostas. 
On the culture side, it'll be a stiff competition between 39-37 Breakaway, 54-37 Rocky Balboa Bots, who have won Engineering Inspiration at Worlds before, 46-35 Bot Busters, and 537 Charger Robotics. From there, we're going to move to the north side of Texas for the first in Texas Plano District event. So the two obvious top teams uh, at this event uh, are Team 118, the Robonauts. Um, and what more can you say about the Robonauts? The white and gold is always going to come out and win their events. So they always build a best, the top tier robots. Um, they're, and they're currently on a six regional slash district event win streak. Um, and they'll be looking to continue that win streak by teaming up with Team 148, the Robo Wranglers. Um, the Black Robots are always coming out in force at their first events, um, and you know it, it should be a very good competition uh, at, with those two teams at the top. Now there are obviously some other teams there, um, such as 5414 Paradox, who were division finalists last year, and they have a consistent performance. I think that no bag is a, this is another team that's going to be helped a lot by no bag. Um, and I, it might be enough to help move them ahead of either 118 or 148. Also to be mentioned are the host teams, 5431 Titan Robotics. They were the Plano Champions and Chairman's Award winners last year, and they're looking to come out on top uh, following a really strong season last year. Also to be noted is Team 6672 Fusion Core, winners of the Dallas event last year with Team 148 and Alliance Captain at Worlds. They may be able to knock off the top teams for the number one seed if they can reliably climb as shown as an effective way in the Greenville events to rank one. Now a sleeper at this event is Team 4192 Flower Mound Tech Club Jaguar Robotics, who are winners of the Hopper Division last year and the Plano event last year. Maybe they'll team up again with 5431 and try to rival the top teams at the event. On the culture side of things, it, it'll be an interesting uh, thing to play out um, to see who's going to win chairmans between 5414 and 5431 uh, at the Plano event, as both have shown to have strong culture programs. Now, I want to give a shout out to a rookie team who has my favorite team name this year, uh, Team 8415, the Dino Nuggies. Um, just an excellent name. And then there is a camp. So there's been a theme of the Robo Wranglers rebranding teams. Uh, you know, 7179 became BD Crunch. Um, and we believe that 8055, who is currently EGM Robotics, should rename themselves to Bossbotics. Uh, as they were referred to all season at the <laughs> Greenville event. That's that being pretty said, good. Yeah. Plano is going to be an awesome event, and I can't wait to see it. But, of course, there are other events this week in Texas. So, Michael, why don't you tell us about the Del Rio District event? Yep. So, just before we go into that, thank you. Uh, 6171 from chat uh, is actually the host team. So, I just wanted to kind of fact check on that. Uh, thank you very much for adding that in. Uh, so, to Del Rio. Uh, 6800 attended Del Rio last year, and I can say that it was the best event we, we attended in the district model. Uh, 4063 Tricks are for Kids knows how to run an event, and I have no doubt they'll be doing the same thing this year. Uh, for those of you familiar with the old school FRC prediction threads on Chief Delphi, uh, here are the locks, dark horses, and sleeper picks for Del Rio this week. Um, starting off with the locks, uh, what I just mentioned, 4063 Tricks are for Kids. Uh, they're the event hosts and went to elimination rounds five times last year. Two districts, once at a regional, states, and at Worlds. Although their best finish was just a finalist. So I see themselves come, uh, coming into this tournament really getting ready to kick some butt and be first place. Also along that lines, we have 7521 Ultimate Robotics. The rookie season last year, they won one event and went to semis two more times. Uh, we've seen some pictures uh, go up on Instagram of their over-the-bumper full-length in intake. Uh, they got a solid shooter with a single Neo and some Fairlane flywheels, so I expect them to do very well as well. Uh, a dark horse, kind of funny, the Dark Knights, 4378. Uh, they're a robust, low-scoring robot, and they have a climber, so I believe they're going to be kind of sneaking in there uh, near the, uh, trying to do some, some damage with that low goal. Uh, and lastly, two sleepers, in my opinions, 2158 Austin Cans. Uh, they have a field in their shop that we've seen, pretty, pretty good-looking field, so we know they're practicing. And additionally, they have some fantastic manufacturing facilities. Uh, and then we also have 2848 Rangers, who are originally the Allsparks. They took a hit last year with their mentor squad. Hopefully they can bounce back uh, and really kick some butt. On to Channel View. 
Yeah, Channel View is going to be a real slugfest with underdogs taking center stage. While this Texas, Texas district is lacking in household names, do not let that fool you. Team 5892 Energy Heroes will be competing at Channel View for their second event already this season. Coming back from a semifinalist exit in Greenville this past weekend, the shooting is a force to be reckoned with, and their climb is getting locked and loaded this week. You can expect them to be a strong showing. Team 4587 Jersey Voltage is making their debut at Channel View, coming off of a finalist in Galileo last year. And with no bag, bag to worry about, I'm excited to see what they'll come out with this year. Team 324 Chips is also making their debut with an accurate shooter and a consistent linear climbing mechanism. Another team to look out for is 231 High Voltage, who is coming to Channel View off of a strong season, having won the Pasadena event in 2019 and winning two quality awards. They're certainly another underdog to watch. Lastly, Team 5427 are also making their debut and are one of the top contending teams to the Chairman's Award after winning it a couple times at champs at state champs last year. Everything's bigger at Texas, including the underdogs, so expect Channel View to really put them all to the test to achieve that blue banner and a ticket to championships. All right, so in the last minute or two remaining, let's go around the horn here and see who we expect to see on the top 25 this week. Well, now that we actually have a week under our belts, uh, I predicted last week that 2468 would take uh, one of those slots, and sure enough, they were first on the list and uh, solidified that position. They're 17th in the world in combined OPR at 72 points a match. Uh, they have an 80% climb accuracy, 18 points in auto, 28 points in teleop. They're looking really solid. Yeah, for me, uh, I was, was proven wrong earlier, but I uh, expected to see 6377, uh, who had a solid six-ball auton at greenville this week um they were playing really smart smart in matches they were having really quick cycles they're really accurate um and then if they get an, a climber added on they're going to be a top team in texas yeah i'm looking forward to seeing 39 37 breakaway last year they were a rocket filling machine i'm excited to see what they do this year all right uh tyler why don't you talk about the lucky winner for our uh giveaway yeah, once again, the uh, keyword was EveryBot. If you're interested in getting in on uh, the analog devices, ADI is 16470IMU. Uh, so we'll draw for that winner. And uh, also we'll get a poll up here in just a second of which week two event are you most uh, looking forward to most. But the winner is going to be uh, Flywheels. Congratulations, Flywheels. Please make sure you reach out to us either here on Twitch or on our Discord uh, to claim your prize. So congratulations to that. And thanks to Analog Devices for the awesome giveaways. All right, that's going to do it for us this evening. And thank you, everyone, who took time to come out and join us today. Don't forget that we'll be accepting submissions for Clips of the Week, so please post a Twitch clip you've seen or a short video to the Fun Discord by Monday at 5 p.m. Also, if you see a team out there and you feel deserves recognition or a claim of the FRC community, don't forget to cast your vote for them and see if they can crack into the FRC Top 25 next week. Let's see how many Mouth of the South region teams we can get on there. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. Fun. Fund needs your help to stay loud, loud, live, and independent, so please consider giving your support by joining Fund Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, or becoming a patron on patreon.com slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is a place to get your information their team needs. Don't forget to check us out on any social medias of your individual preference, including Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, Michael, and Nick, and our producer, Tyler, I want to thank you for tuning in and thank you all. Thank you to all of our moderators in chat. If you're watching us live, then up next for your viewing pleasure is We the North. Talk to you next time on Mouth of the South. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.